we are talking about a very serious subject today. Very serious. Hi, I'm Amy on A Lolly Live, and today we are talking about budgeting for the holidays. There's no time like the present. Ooh, did you see what I did there? <laughs> I got this little fancy smancy notebook, and I made notes in it. I even colored that. Budgeting is a one, two, three process. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is how much money you need to save for the holidays. One plus two plus three equals what? What are the one and the two and the three? Let's talk about it. Number one is family. Number two is others. Number three is bonus. And let me explain what each one of those means. Family first. Family would be from us to who? You would put kid one and kid two and kid three and four and five and ten, however many. You would include things like if you give gifts to your siblings. My family, we don't exchange gifts, but my husband's family, they rotate and they exchange gifts. And so we would include his sister and her family because that's somebody that we would be buying, purchasing a gift for. And my mom and his parents, those are all those are all things that would be included in the family section. And for the sake of simplicity, I am going to give each one of them $50. That's how much I'm going to spend on each thing. $50. You can decide how much would be appropriate for each one of these situations. Maybe what would be appropriate is $500. And maybe what would be appropriate is $5. And so you decide on that. But I'm, for simplicity's sake, I'm just putting $50 each for each one of those different things. But this is what you would include in your family section. However, there is more to think about. And that is side two. And this is also the family section. This would include, what about gifts from me to you? Or you to me? Me, 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 me. <clears throat> or what about gifts that kids maybe would give siblings or to their parents or that kind of thing? Perhaps in your family, you know, they don't do that. But maybe, you know, some, some families, they give their kids, you know, 20 bucks to purchase a gift for one of their siblings or for their parent or, you know, or those kinds of things. And so if that's something that your family does, then you would need to include that here also. For simplicity's sake, we're going to do $50. Ta-da! Add it all that up. 100, 200, 300, 400 dollars. Whew, it's already sounding expensive. 400 dollars! That's how I came up with the 400 dollars, is I assigned an amount to each person on the list. I added all those up. That's what my number one is. It's the family, and I added up 400 dollars. Number two. Others would include things like co-workers or employees. Uh, we're gonna do $50 for coworkers and employees. Maybe I have five coworkers and, and so I'm gonna get, you know, five $10 gifts and so that would be a $50 thing. Maybe this would actually be more appropriate if you put like $500 or $5,000, maybe $5,000, ooh. <laughs> um, but like if you had like five employees and you gave them $100 each or, you know, something like that, then, you know, that's what you would include in the co-workers and employees. Teachers or other service providers, like maybe your postman or woman or the garbage person, or maybe you have two teachers and you're gonna give them each a $25 gift. Friends and neighbors. And this could include, you decide you're gonna make uh, treat plates or something for your friends and neighbors, but you would need money to purchase the things to make the treats. So that's something that you would include, you know, friends and neighbors, again, $50. And then charity, $50. Maybe you use that to buy a toy for Boys for Tots program, or maybe you use it to put money in the little red pots of the people ringing bells, the little bell ringer things. And it would include a mystery person because if you're planning this far in advance, you can just assume that there's going to be a mystery person that you need to give a gift to that you didn't think about at the time when you started planning. And so we're going to just include that mystery person. And if the mystery person never shows up, well, I am mysterious. You could always send one to me. <laughs> $50. We're going to add all this up 
And that is what's going to give us our number two. 250 for other. 250. We have our bonus. Bonus area. And this would be things like decorations, big dinners or other parties, and activities. If the lights on your tree are not working particularly well and you're gonna get new lights next year, you would need to include that. If you pay to chop down a tree every year and it costs a certain amount to go and chop down that tree and to get the tree, that's something that you would need to include. If you need to go and get some new decorations next year, that's something that you would need to include. If you decide, you know, every year I want to add a small little decoration to my outside decorations, that's something that you would include in the decorations. And again, for simplicity's sake, we are putting $50 down. Uh, big dinners or other parties. We have a tradition and for Christmas morning breakfast, we serve, well, it's sort of breakfast. It's like second breakfast because first breakfast is like candy out of your stocking. But yeah, Christmas morning, second breakfast. We serve favorites and root beer. We always serve root beer with our breakfast. And it is just a fun little family tradition. I just love that. And we serve it in our little china cups. And we pour a little bit of root beer in the little china cup and you have to drink it with your pinky up so that you're fancy. <laughs> but one of my very favorite foods is crab. I love king crab. Oh my goodness, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's also very expensive. It's expensive enough that I usually have it one time a year. One time! And that would be Christmas morning, second breakfast. That's something that would need to be included in the big dinners or other parties, those kinds of things, because that is a kind of large expense that, you know, is associated with Christmas. Maybe you spend extra money this time of year to purchase lots and lots of uh, baking supplies because you do lots of baking. <clears throat> Perhaps you have a party where you decorate gingerbread houses and so you have to go out and you have to purchase the candy and supplies for decorating the gingerbread houses. That's something that you would include in this big dinners, parties, and other things like that. If you go to an ornament exchange every year and for that ornament exchange you need to purchase an ornament, though that's something that you would include in this, this section, big dinners, other parties. For simplicity's sake, we are doing $50, which is not accurate because crab costs more than that. I will just tell you that, it does. Activities. Activities would include things like going to the ballet to watch the Nutcracker, or maybe your family goes ice skating every year at Christmas time. Maybe for the holidays, you always go to the movies. And so like Christmas Eve, you go to the movies. And so that's something that, you know, that's an activity that would cost money. Maybe you decide that this year for Christmas, we are going to go on a sleigh ride. So you plan ahead and you say, this is how much I'm going to spend on activities. And for simplicity's sake, we are spending, guess how much? $50. That's what your number three section is. It's your decorations. It's your parties and your dinners and your extra groceries that you might be purchasing. It's the extra, extra activities that you might be going to and those kinds of things. That's what number three is. And so we're going to add that up. 150. Family, 400. Others, 250. And Bonus, 150. So we're gonna add all of that up. That means math, the old fashioned way, cause I don't understand new math. It doesn't make sense to me. One plus two plus three equals $800. One again is the family section, two is others, which would, you know, other people that you would include in your gifts, and three is your bonus area. And so you add all those up, how much you're gonna spend in each area, and that gives you how much you need to save this year, $800. Now you would take the $800 and you would divide it by the number of months you have left to save this money. Now you would say, since this is the very beginning of the year, that you have 12 months left. But let's be real honest, you don't have 12 months left because the last month is when you need it. So you only have 11 months because you need the money by the beginning part of December. However you decide to work that out, you need to divide it by however many months you have left. If January is almost over and you want the money by the beginning of December, then that's only 10 months. We're doing 10 because it's easy math. $800 is how much we need divided by 10 months. That's 80, that's $80 a month. If you got paid twice a month, then that's $40 out of each paycheck. 
There is another way of doing this. So let's say that it's closer and you can't save $80 a month or $40 a paycheck. Let's say that that's not feasible. Let's say that it's only feasible for you to save $500 between now and when Christmas is, and that that's the most that you could have saved up. Well, we already know that with the budget that we had, it was 800, so we have $300 worth of things that we have to get rid of. And so we will go back and we will remove $300 worth of stuff. If you decide that you aren't going to be able to save that much, I would say that generally speaking, the easiest places to remove money are areas two and areas three. We look at areas two and three and we say, you know what, decorations, I have, a store-bought tree. I'm not planning on buying any decorations. That's not gonna happen this year. I don't need that $50 there. Guess what? We are going to cross that out. Ta-da! We already just said 50 bucks. Activities. We're only gonna do free activities this year because like it's kind of a tight year and so the activities that we're gonna do are places where we don't have to pay. So no money there. And let's say that for dinners and parties I decide I only need 20 extra bucks. 20 extra bucks. Oh. Maybe, let's say 25 for easy math. 25, and so now, this section, I'm on, it's only 25 instead of 150. We just saved a whole bunch of money. But more has to come off. There's too much and not enough money to go around. We're gonna go over here to number two, and we're gonna see what areas here that we can, we can eliminate. First of all, I'm going to eliminate my mystery person, sorry, but if I met you after now, you are not getting a gift. No mystery person gift. Friends and neighbors. Maybe I'm just going to make some plates of cookies and so $25 is enough instead of 50. And I only have one coworker that I, you know, that I need to buy a gift for and I already know that the Christmas gift exchange that we have that has a $15 limit. And so I don't need $50, oh, 25. We're doing 25 easy amounts, that it has a $25 limit, and so I don't need $50. And so co-workers, we're only doing 25 there. Teachers and other service providers, as much as I would love to get them something, as I'm looking at this, the only way for me to get the money down close enough would be for me to just say, I can't give my teachers and service providers any gifts this year. And guess what? That's okay. It is okay to not give them a gift. If you decide that you need to give the teachers or service providers a gift, a note saying thank you is really a nice gift. Let's see if we've saved enough money or if we need to cut corners in other areas. That's still $25 over budget. And so we're gonna go to number one and we're gonna see if there's any areas there where we could cut some money. Perhaps you could say, normally I budget $50 for our parents maybe this year I'm only gonna budget 25. Or perhaps you say, we're not gonna give the kids any money for gifts for their siblings or things. They're either gonna have to make something or come up with the money on their own. And so you don't do that. Or you give them half as much. And because we need to get rid of 25 more dollars, we're going to just do half as much for sibling gifts. Instead of doing one plus two plus three equals however much and figuring out however much that is, sometimes, it's important to figure out how much you actually have to spend and then make one plus two plus three equal however much you have to spend. Both ways are good ways to do it. If you realize that the amount that you have to save isn't reasonable, that's not reasonable, the only, however much I can save is only this much, then you're gonna have to adjust your one plus two plus three to match that. But the two sides have to match. It's not a good budget if you change this but you don't change that. You can't do that. They have to match, both sides. It is a scale. That's how you budget for Christmas. And so, figure it out and start saving each month, each paycheck. Either put it in a little savings account or put a little bit of cash in an envelope and set it to the side and hide it in a special place where you will never find it again. No, don't do that. Or hide it in a special place where you will not use it, but you will find it again. That is the end of our Christmas budget. And so I will see you next time on A Lala Life.